Well, Brillo, the armadillo, my baby, I love this guy to death, but he is a destructive little dude, and sure enough, what did you do, Brillo? If you look right here, he, again, broke through the actual cage, and he's actually trying to burrow his way out. That's the one downside of things like armadillos, is that they're very destructive when it comes to certain things. Thankfully, what are you doing, buddy? Come here, little sweetie. Oh my God, he's so amazing. It's gonna be great when we're across the street, but we've learned that you've gotta do cement as a base, because this universal rock, although very durable, you can just burrow right through it, right? So you already know that we cemented the entire bottom of this cage, but if you can see right here, sure enough, just went right through it. And the thing is, if he digs more of that out, which he probably is going to, what's gonna happen is he can get out of this enclosure, which would be horrible if he got behind these cages, because then how could we ever find him, right? So of course we cemented it before, we're gonna have to do another big cement job, kind of build that cement up a good inch, maybe inch and a half, so he can't tear it apart again. It's okay, you know, this is just part of it. But again, what we learned is across the street, we're probably gonna do about a two foot high cinder block wall and then <laughs> and then we'll case it out with like some universal rock or cement but that way you can do it you gotta remember it's gonna be a walk-in room so instead of being an enclosure like this you're gonna actually be able to walk in more like drogo it's gonna be really cool for the experiences but for now we've got to just get some cement together and patch this up because brillo certainly destroyed his cage again so for now brillo is gonna have to go in this holding enclosure until we get his cage all fixed up he doesn't like it very much i don't blame him but it won't be long we'll go ahead and get this all cemented up it'll dry pretty quick and then he can get back in here we just have to make sure that this cement's thick enough that he can't tear back into it. So uh, we got some quick creek bucket, some water, and that's all you need. What'd you use, Mike, to stir it? There's one shaped like a pizza and spatula. It's always good. So of course I have my helpers here. I've got Noah, Mike. Oh, Mike laughed at So right. maybe, I, okay, there you go. <laughs> Basically, I'm just gonna teach these guys. Again, Mike kind of knows what to do. He patched it up at one point as well. Yeah, it works but, so uh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah we have to great. do a little bit thicker here. So <laughs> what I want to do is just take this quick creek, pour about, don't need a ton of it. It's a little clunky. I know dry ice was in there. Oh, my shoe. You got some concrete on your shoe. You know what? I'm just going to take some water yeah. here, fill up a little bit, and then you can start stirring. Yeah, you want it to be like a slurry, right? Oh, yeah. We're going to probably do a little drier than you can. If you're doing like a cement floor, you want it to be a little like bit thinner, right? The viscosity a little bit. But this has to stick on the wall. So we're going to keep it a little bit less moist and just it make does. it a consistency. It's getting pretty close right now. One second. Let me get this chunkage dry at the bottom. I got to get that involved. You already got vision problems. That's why I use a camera so I can see closer. That is a nice pack. I said this from the beginning. This enclosure isn't ideally perfect for Brillo because, you know, really I'd like to have him something much bigger, something that he could actually run around a lot more. Again, it's going to be a giant room that he's going to be in like 10 foot. And basically all I'm doing here is just packing all this in here. I make sure it doesn't get in here. I need to actually even just take it, hit my hand first yeah. and just pack it in here. Just pack it really tight. I want to get a really good thick amount in here so he can't break back out. Essentially that universal rock is great material and it really is durable but it is only about a quarter inch thick right? So what we want to do is not only pack in where he dug but we want to put a good half inch or so kind of material on top of it with the cement so that there's no way that he can actually break through it you know what I mean? And you got to just kind of do it like this and then we can work on the pretty part after we get enough mud in here. That way if for some reason he does break past this there's nowhere he can go you know what i mean it's like a, all cement in here i'm just packing all behind the universal rock it's interesting because it's just something that we never really thought about when we first put him in here that he could actually burrow his way out and he was actually really good for the first probably six or eight months he never did anything he was completely fine but then after about six or eight months he just started going at the stuff and he realized hey i can dig out and they're very smart obviously so he knew there was a weakness over here so of course he's just going to go ahead and put all of his energy into that weakness now, i don't know if it's enrichment for him you know to scrape and try to get out or if he's actually trying to escape i have no idea i mean if he escaped i don't know that he would do a whole lot still not something you want you know we've had a sloth out i prefer not to have our armadillo out that's for sure first time i've ever ever did concrete work was actually believe it or not when i had to fix this enclosure didn't know how it was going to go doing pretty good just be careful not to push that how you doing too much yeah when you push too hard all you're doing is going to make it go apart now do this to it you getting this I'm getting it. And again, it looks pretty natural. We'll just probably just make a couple of scrape marks on it and stuff like that with a trowel. But I think that once this dries, it will actually be pretty safe, I think. Wow. You knocked the lid off. 
Not yet. So I think we have enough cement on the wall, thick enough now where he won't be able to break into that. And then everywhere else is pretty secure. We're just going to do the cleanup. It'll take probably about 12 hours for this to cure enough to get him back in here. And about 24 hours before it's completely cured. But uh, after 12 hours, the quick creek sets pretty hard. So we should be in pretty good shape. So unfortunately, Brillo is going to have to stay out for a little while, but he'll be okay. And like I said, across the street, he's going to have a paradise. And it's going to be cool too. Of course, when we do Brillo experiences now, we actually take him out and take him into the party room. Whereas across the street, you'll actually be able to go into the enclosure closure and actually spend time with them, which I think is going to be actually better for him. It's going to be just better for everyone, to be totally honest with you. We certainly have to make sure that that first two foot is going to have to be cinder block and then cement kind of work like this because uh, he is definitely a digger. No, no. Mike, your, Liz, your thing's escaping. Are you trying to put him in there? Yeah. You guys got this? Oh, uh, oh, Mike. He just got, got me. Mike? Like Mike? Yeah. Oh, 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 he's stuck in my arm. Ooh, it's worse than my cow. I'll Wait, tell you why that. Why don't you just let him walk around? Okay, first of all. Now we're all bleeding. Some... <laughs> I always get called and I'm bleeding. Uh... Good job, Connie. Mike and Noah are actually working on Bowser's Pond, and the fact is, is that, you know, things like that with Brillo happen, like, constantly. You're always doing something. You're fixing something. Maybe a filter isn't working right. A hose pops off. There's a leak. That's part of running a business. You know, it's the same way at Reptarium, at BHB. It's certainly going to be even more at the aquarium, because then we got all that water going on, and filtration, and pipes, and all kinds of stuff that can constantly go wrong. These guys have to figure out how to clean Bowser today. The best, you know, cleaning Bowser, literally, you have to go in there with the pond Novak, clean the filters. You know, it probably is like a two to three hour job every single week we have to clean him so that it looks really good there's always some project and most of the projects take quite a bit of time all right mike what's next oh look at this suck that up there you go all right i'm i'm bored you got it. Okay. good job you just do it a lot you do a lot better than i would ever you've had years to perfect this skill why would i you know impede on that i appreciate that all right, well Mike's doing that. The easy job. I'm gonna clean the glass. Don't look at me, Mike. Little uh, Windex. Heavy metal base. Oh, we have another project to work on. Lose the shed out, and a lot of it's in the water. So we gotta clean the water and then get all the sheds. But I also gotta move Lucy because I don't know if there's shed underneath her or not, but there probably is. Oh, you ready? Ah! Clean that. We gotta move her. Anything good? Blood. That's not good. <laughs> Who's such a good girl? All right, Mike, I moved her. Is there any shed under there? Yeah. You want to just grab it? Where's the sucker thing? Connie's using it. She tries to steal it from Connie. Give me a minute. We don't have the regular vac, and we don't have the wet vac. Yeah, we're supposed to vacuum the shed and the water. So this is a great plan. No, I'm getting angry. We're like, no nerd, no. <laughs> we need a scrubby and a drainer. <laughs> You're really getting an action shot of all of this, huh? And the work certainly doesn't stop just at the Reptarium. Obviously, BHB has a ton of stuff going on. And there's no one that has more job responsibilities than Lori, uh, including now still taking care of the adult colubrids. There's always a lot of things to do here, whether it's BHB or Reptarium. One of those things is adult colubrids. We may have gotten rid of the majority of them, but the ones that we do have, I still do have to take care of them, breeding, feeding, stuff like that. So it is just another thing that's on the list of things. Things are constantly happening here. It never stop. It's cyclical. If Lucy didn't blow up her cage, the anaconda's peed in theirs. The anaconda's didn't pee in theirs. Butterscotch, dude. It just never stops, now does it? Exactly. What? What? There's so much shed in here. I feel like she only shed in the water. How much scarier would a 20-foot snake be if it had arms and legs? Wouldn't it just be like a dragon? Yeah, but they don't think dragons don't exist. <laughs> Well, they would. Like Lucy and Chris. What? 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 Mike, you think that's good? Can you just say yeah so we can start filling it up? Oh my goodness, she's gonna crush Franklin. She's gonna crush it! No! Oh! Frankie! As you guys know, we talk about making sure everything looks good, smells good. This particularly scenario does not make the zoo smell. It's just pleasant. It is something that we try to do, and that's why we try to get this stuff done early. Because when we are open or we have a tour, we have to make it look and smell good. Like, we don't want people coming into this. I guarantee somebody will puke. Yeah, getting it off. Woo! I'm in here because of you. What? Turn it off. Yeah, turn it off. I just don't think I turn it off. Always a mess in here. 
car, dude. There's shed right there. Oh, it was an accident, dude. You're gonna make me look like I beat myself. Yeah, Alright guys, filling back up. Typically takes about three, three and a half hours depending on how far you go down, how far you go up. Of course the filters are super dirty, you gotta clean those. Now we're just letting it fill up. We got the nice warm water going in there. Hopefully 30 to 40 minutes, so almost at three hour mark now. But since we're open more during the week, we have the less days to do the bigger projects. This is something that I would typically do on a Thursday, so it looks great for Friday, Saturday. Now I'm doing it on Tuesday, so it looks good. Wednesday to Sunday. Yeah, that day's added up. So there's basically two types of jobs here. Mike is about to do another maintenance job because Elvis's light bulb went out. And how you have to do it is unscrew this and uh, walk back here very tight. You can see, shimmy back there, back there, and actually replace the light bulb. You love this, don't you? I gotta suck it in really good. <laughs> I actually uh, did the hide and seek back there. That's where I was in the entire time. And then of course the other thing is these kind of, you know, emergency things. I mean, I guess a light bulb's a little bit of emergency. It has to be done immediately. Whereas some of the maintenance could be like, hey, we could wait till tomorrow. The fact is, is when you're running a business like us, especially an animal, business really important to uh, love all the jobs got to put your energy into whatever needs to be done just maintenance every single day and thankfully we have a great crew that keeps the animals up so well or when something comes up like Rillo's cage where it's like uh oh there's a problem we've got to fix it as a matter of fact I'll show you something that has happened a number of times here is that this enclosure here if you push up and over which is just the tendency to do right if you're a little shorter too you're gonna push like kind of like that way and this this glass has actually fallen out probably five times came down crushed it on the ground. As a matter of fact, one time Mike was throwing it away and he got a bunch of stitches in his hand, right Mike? So again, these are kind of emergency things because you know when that glass is broke, what are you gonna do? You gotta make sure you have glass because now you've got a bunch of alligators, which by the way are getting big and need to get back down to Gatorland and get some new ones in. But you have this glass that's there and these gators can get out. You have to be like emergency. All right, where can I get emergency glass? Hopefully we won't break any more glass here, but if we do, it's to get like an extra piece cut so it's on hand, place it immediately. Again, emergencies happen, that's part of it. And you know, to run places like this, you gotta love it all, right? You know, the good, the bad, the ugly, and whatever it takes, you just do what you gotta do to make sure the place keeps running and is awesome. Mike, where you at? Hi, Mike. How's it going? It's tight. Hi, Mike. What? <laughs> Question. What? Um, are any of the snakes going to be available to go on duty use since they were just fed yesterday? Uh, Bart, Maisie again. Okay. You can do marshmallow. You can eat. Thanks. But Jesus said, "Blessed every life." <laughs> Oh. I think Mike needs to read the Bible. It was God that said, let there be light way before Jesus was a part of it. Oh, I forgot my duster. Uh, I said butt Jesus, but yeah. Butt Jesus? Butt Jesus. Uh. Howdy ho. How you doing? <laughs> Perfect. Nailed it. Found an extra one enjoyed today's video if you did there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos you can also hit that subscription button it would mean a lot to me also hit that like button while you're down there have a wonderful day reptile army remember <sighs> it's been dusty back there